Pierre asks a question. He says, how to calculate the best strike price for a call option? I do the same thing. I use the long option tool, the long option finder. Oh, okay, how to find the best strike price for a call option, and then Pierre covered it with selling. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about using the long option finder for long calls. Might touch up on that later. Pierre, there is no one answer to your question. If I'm doing a covered call position, and this will go into Ben's question just a moment later, but if I'm looking to sell covered calls on a stock, it's because I have a specific target and goal in mind as a trading plan. I always like to address this as there are three ways that an investor might look to trade a covered call position. I want to use something with normal strikes, Pierre, uh, and good volatility, not something that has 50 cent strike differences in weeklies or anything along those lines. I'll use something that has weeklies, but I want something that has a good, reasonable volatility, but isn't too much. So we're just going to go. Let me see here. Let's just go to the covered call search. And this will pull up the default, Pierre. We'll be look. Oh, sorry. This was from last week's webinar. I'm just going to go to the at the money initial value screen. All right. Build a bear has been popular recently, but it's been fluctuating. Danos Corp. Yes. Low price, but interesting. I'm going to stick with guess for right now. Now, let's just link to the option. Let's ignore what just came up here in the search results. And let's go to the option chain. And the reason I like this didn't offer weeklies. Okay, that's fine. The reason I like to use the option chain, Pierre, for this discussion is that our option chain shows you the three important criteria you'd look for when evaluating covered calls on a single stock the downside protection, the percent return if unchanged, and the percent if assigned. You can also go into the add remove columns feature if you want to add annualized return. And I think I'm going to do that for the annualized downside. Now nah, we're going to use it for the annualized percent if unchanged. So I'm going to go to add remove columns. I'm going to scroll down through all this list. Downside protection, percent if assigned annualized, percent if unchanged annualized at midpoint. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Uh, I'm going to change the column order first. I'm going to put this right next to the percent if unchanged. When I first go to the option chain here, I'm interested in guess. This isn't a recommendation or suggestion. What I'm looking at here is that I have a goal in mind to sell covered calls, Pierre. I don't need to know your goal. That's your goal. That's your personal goal. But if my goal is to generate at least one or 2% of premium per month and maybe potentially earn as much as 2 or 3%, that's already dictated to me what I'm looking at. And what do I mean by that? Your three columns here, the downside protection is simply the option premium you're collecting divided by the stock price. My goal is to get at least 1 or 2% against the stock price. I'm at least starting here. Not just time value, time value and intrinsic, but I'm starting here. 26 doesn't cut it for September. The 27 doesn't cut it for September. The 28 doesn't cut that minimum requirement I have. So right there, I know my starting point. But now I also want to see a max return if assigned of maybe around one and a half to 3%. So I'm right here with at least getting a reasonable downside protection, one, 3% against the current stock price, maybe a little bit more. But I also, if I get assigned, I also want to look for around a one and a half to 3% if assigned or greater. So right there, I'm tuned in to these three. Why am I focusing on September? Because you always get a better annualized return selling week by week or month by month rather than trying to sell six months out in time, eight months out of time. You get a higher premium, but you get a lower annualized return. Now, if I'm looking to force just a weekly covered call position, I don't want to say force. If I'm, if I'm considering using weeklies or even two week out or three week out trades, and I want to get 0.5 to 1% return every seven to 14 days, and I want a reasonable downside protection, and I'm not married to the stock, meaning, Pierre, 
I don't care if it gets assigned. I want to take that assignment, earn my return, and then move on to the next position. So I'm focusing right here. In the money, at the money, slightly higher probability above, getting 0.7% for 14 days or 1.8% with a 66% probability for 14 days. I'm hoping to get assigned. The position's gone. I'm going to run the power option search on Monday following expiration, look for new positions that match my criteria. So here's the question, Pierre, that you have to answer for yourself. This gives you the comparison of the downside protection versus the percent if assigned. You can evaluate the annualized percentage returns on it as well. What are you selling covered calls for? Are you selling it for stocks that you want to own long term that you're hoping not to be assigned because you just want to generate monthly premium, month by month against it to lower the cost basis and keep it as a core holding in your account? In that case, you're going with more of the out of the money options, but you have to find a premium and a downside protection that matches your goals. In the case of guests, to be honest with you, I don't like these out of the money premiums. For a long term hold, 24 is a little bit too close at 23.87. I'd be worried about assignment. 38 cents, 18 cents. Yeah, I'm getting 1.6.7%. That's okay. I have a low probability. But in this case, even though it's a lower annualized return, I'm probably going further out down here to October, looking at maybe the 26 strike at 73 cents, maybe the 27 strike at 50 cents, a 2% premium, 3% downside protection against the current stock price with a 29 or 22% probability of being assigned. If you're not married to the stocks, you're looking to just generate income on a consistent basis, be assigned, earn your one, two, uh, let's say 1% to 2% every 14 days or earn maybe 3% every 30 days, then you're looking slightly in the money to get the better downside protection, but still keep that percent if unchanged and, of course, the percent if assigned goals for the position with the better probability of getting assigned, earning that return, and moving on to the new position. That's what you're looking for. And if you're just looking to get income, you don't care if you keep the stock, you don't care if it gets assigned one way or the other. Remember, the highest time value for any expiration on any covered call opportunity, Pierre, always exists at the money. Okay? That's known as the at the money bell curve, where the options that are closest to the strike price calls or puts any expiration have the highest time value compared to the other options. In the money for the call, higher premium lower time value because most of that is intrinsic out of the money all time value lower premium and that's the at the money bell curve three ways to trade covered calls you're looking just to get a return with a high probability of getting assigned consistently and earning that return you're going slightly in the money targeting your goals for whether it's seven days out five days out 14 days out or one month out in time you want to hold long term just generate income like a dividend, uh, dividend like income on a month by month basis. You're probably going to the next expiration, October in this case, or if it offers weeklies, you're going 25, 30 days out. And you're selling the out of the money calls that give you a one, one and a half, maybe hopefully a 2% downside protection premium against the current stock price if that's your goal. But you're going further out in time for those further out of the money options to make the premium worth it. And if you kind of don't care, you're just looking to generate premium, you think you're good at picking bullish stocks that if it wavers a little bit and the call expires, you're fine, you'll just sell again. If it goes up and gets assigned, it's fine. If you want to maximize time value, you're right at the money. Those are the three ways to use a covered call position. We have a full webinar on that somewhere, Pierre. I'll have to look that up for you uh, on the three ways to trade a covered call, but that's essentially the review. And if you have a stock and you want to pick which is the best strike price for you, you can use the option chain to just gauge quickly your downside protection versus percent if assigned, time value, probability, and annualized return if unchanged or if assigned at 